Hello guys, how are you all doing? Now I'm sure we are seeing each other after a long time. So first of all, let me give you a hearty welcome to the very first chapter of physics in the standard. And I promise you, it will be a fun filled roller coaster ride. Now, before I say anything about this chapter, I have a few questions to ask. So, have you ever wondered how do things in our world move? I mean, think about it. Why does an object fall back to the ground when it is thrown upwards? Why does a ball slow down after rolling for a while on the ground? Why do two magnets attract or repel each other? Or for that matter, why does a charged comb attract bits of paper? And finally, why does the earth go around the sun? So, why do things move in our world and why do they stop moving after some time? You see, that's an age-old question which several thinkers and scientists have tried to answer since antiquity. Scientists like Ptolemy, Kepler, Galileo, Copernicus, Newton and many more have deeply explored the problems related to motion and came up with their own fundamental conclusions. But among them, the most important contribution is undoubtedly of Newton, who formalized the entire concept by giving the famous three laws of motion to the world. Now, as students of physics, you will definitely learn about the three laws of motion in great detail later. But for now, let me tell you that Newton connected the idea of motion with another idea of force. And in the process, he ended up defining what force really is. So let's go ahead and see how Newton defined force. So, according to Newton, an object at rest would continue to be at rest, but an object undergoing uniform motion would continue undergoing uniform motion until an external force acts on it and changes its state of motion. So you see, this is how Newton connects motion with the idea of force. That force is something that changes an object's state of motion, which can either be rest or motion in a particular direction. To understand this better, let me explain the same thing to you using a real life example. Let's go and meet a golfer and his golf ball. So when a golf ball is placed on the peg or the tee as golfers like to call it, it is completely at rest. No questions about that. Now, if the golfer doesn't strike the ball, then the ball would continue to be at rest forever. But when the golfer strikes the ball, he imparts a force, which puts the ball in a state of motion from the state of rest. In simple words, the ball which was at rest before is now moving. Interesting. Now, while the ball is flying, there is no significant force trying to slow it down except gravity. Now, in case you don't know about gravity, don't worry, we'll talk about it very soon. Now, there is some air resistance, by the way, but it's too small, so we'll neglect it for now. So, due to that, the ball continues to move until it strikes the ground again. Now, ground applies a force that slows the ball down and brings it back to the state of rest from the state of motion. And like that, we have Newton's law working everywhere in life. If you want, you can think of countless examples. For instance, if you are sitting in a moving car and the car suddenly stops, you tend to fall forward, right? Now this happens because your body, which was in motion before, is suddenly brought to rest. So the seat belt that you are wearing eventually pulls you back, applies a force on you and puts you back in your seat. Now, similarly, when a batsman hits a cricket ball, he changes the speed and direction of the motion of the ball. How does he do that? Well, of course, by applying a force on the ball. So, from all these discussions, we can conclude that force is something that changes an object's state from rest to motion and vice versa. Force can also change the direction of motion of an object, like in the case of a cricket ball hit by a bat. So, I hope the idea of force that we have discussed till now is clear to you. In the upcoming videos, we'll refine this idea even more. So now can you answer the questions that I asked in the beginning? Well, let's see. So an object which is thrown upwards eventually falls back to earth because a constant force pulls it back. Now this force is nothing but the force of gravity, which we'll talk about later. Similarly, when an object is rolling down the ground, it eventually slows down because a consistent force pulls it back. Now, a magnet attracts or repels another magnet by applying a certain force on it. 
and a charged comb attracts bits of paper again by applying a certain force on it similarly the earth goes around the sun because sun applies a consistent force on earth so yes we can't escape the sun as long as we are in the solar system great looks like we got all the questions answered but have we do you think the force that pulls the objects back to earth is same as the force which slows down a rolling ball i don't think so similarly do you think the force that acts between two magnets is same as the force that acts between sun and the earth again that's not the case so in the next video let me tell you more about different types of forces for now let's summarize what we learned in this video an object at rest continues to be at rest but an object undergoing uniform motion continues to undergo uniform motion until an external force acts on it force is capable of changing an object's state from rest to motion and vice versa force is also capable of changing the direction of motion of the object like in the case of a ball hit by a bat 